Shalom, brothers and sisters. This week, I want to answer the question, what is a Mormon? What does it mean to be a Mormon? Now, the reality is that if you ask a hundred different Latter-day Saints that question, you're probably going to get a hundred different answers, and not all Latter-day Saints like to be called Mormons. Some people find the term to be irrelevant, outdated, or offensive. I Today, I'm going to give you my definition of what it means to be a Mormon, and I'm going to use the Book of Mormon to express my views on this. So in the Universal Book of Mormon, let's take a look at Jacob starting in 3141. Now behold, it came to pass that I, Jacob, having ministered much unto my people in word, and I cannot write but a little of my words because of the difficulty of engraving our words upon plates, and we know that the things which we write upon plates must remain. But whatsoever things we write upon, anything save it be upon plates, must perish and vanish away. But we can write a few words upon plates, which will give our children and also our beloved brethren a small degree of knowledge concerning us, or concerning their fathers. Now in this thing we do rejoice, and we labor diligently to engrave these words upon plates, hoping that our beloved brethren and our children will receive them with thankful hearts, and look upon them, that they may learn with joy and not with sorrow, neither with contempt concerning their first parents. For for this intent have we written these things, that they may know that we knew of Christ, and we had a hope of his glory many hundred years before his coming. And not only we ourselves had a hope of his glory, but also all the holy prophets which were before us. Behold, they believed in Christ and worshipped the Father in his name, and also we worship the Father in his name. And for this intent we keep the law of Moses, it pointing our souls to him. And for this cause it is sanctified unto us for righteousness, even as it was accounted unto Abraham in the wilderness to be obedient unto the commandments of God in offering up his son Isaac, which is a similitude of God and his only begotten Son. Wherefore, we search the prophets, and we have many revelations and the spirit of prophecy. And having all these witnesses, we obtain a hope. And our faith becometh unshaken, insomuch that we truly can command in the name of Jesus. And the very trees obey us, or the mountains, or the waves of the sea. Nevertheless, the Lord God showeth us our weakness, that we may know that it is by his grace and his great condescension unto the children of men that we have the power to do these things. Behold, great and marvelous are the works of the Lord. How unsearchable are the depths of the mysteries of him. And it is impossible that mankind should find out all his ways. And no man knoweth his ways, say it be revealed unto him. Wherefore, brethren, Despise not the revelations of God. So I just read a lot here, and you're probably thinking, what does this have to do with Mormonism? How does this express what it means to be a Mormon? Why, why, why would you read this to tell me what it means to be Mormon? Or at least Mormon to you, Dave. Well, let's get into it. I want to start off at the very beginning. It says... It came to pass that I, Jacob, having ministered much unto my people. Being Mormon is a ministry. Does that mean that everyone is ordained or, or given a calling in some sort of priesthood capacity? Not necessarily. But it's not a passive religion. We are a people of peace as Christians. And therefore, we teach the goodness of God. We teach peace. And that can just be by our example. But we are called to minister in some capacity, even if that's just by our example. And so the first thing in my mind that makes us Mormons is that we are a ministering people. We are here to help in the healing process. Now it talks about the idea of writing next. I'm going to skip over how things that aren't written in metal 
can rot and vanish. My understanding is Joseph Smith, that he had a cloth over the gold plates and didn't actually even look at them while he was translating them. So, But having them physically present put the young prophet in the mindset to where he was able to receive the revelation of the translation. So you can say that we are a record-keeping people, but I don't think that writing things down is as important as the reason why, which is to remember the past. They read the scriptures in the plates of brass because they want to know where they came from. And they write down a record. They want to make sure that their future generations, their children, know where they came from. So there are people that doesn't merely live in the present. They look backwards and forwards. Christine read a book recently about the idea of the seven grandfathers. When I say a Native American, I don't mean like all Native Americans, but it is one particular Native American understanding that she finds very interesting, very fascinating, and I, I do as well. But the idea is that before you make a major decision, you want to think back seven generations. What are the things that led up to that moment? And you want to look forward seven generations. What impact is what I'm about to do going to have on my children, my grandchildren, my great-grandchildren, etc.? And I think that as, as Mormons, that's the kind of Christians we are. It's not merely do what we want in the moment, but reflect backwards and forwards and see what the impact is going to be. And that impact, we hope, is to bring people to Christ. For this intent, we have written these things that they may know that we knew of Christ and we had a hope of his glory many hundred years before his coming. And not only we ourselves had a hope of his glory, but also the holy prophets which were before us. So here we have it again, looking backward and forward. We want you to know, our children, and grandchildren, and great-grandchildren, etc., that we knew. And not only us, but all the people that came before us knew as well. It's all about Jesus Christ. So let's go back to the first one. It's a ministry in Christ. The records are about Christ. Why? Because we teach of Christ. Mormonism is about teaching of Jesus Christ and showing that we have always taught of Christ from the very beginning. According to Jacob, those who kept the records of the plates of brass believed in Christ and worshiped the Father in his name. And it's saying that they, the Nephites, also worshiped the Father. I've talked before about this idea between grace and works. Because of the fact that they are moved by the grace of Jesus Christ, they are going to do good works. Not of themselves, but because they're building that personal relationship with God, and God changes us and transforms us. And therefore, we do the good works. And what are the works that we do? We keep the law of Moses. Why? Because it points our souls to God. Now, do we keep the law of Moses? That's a good question, and it's going to depend on who you ask. Jesus came to fulfill the law, and I'm not going to get into this, this argument today in, in this discussion, but I do want to say that I would surmise that even if a Latter-day Saint, a Mormon, says that they don't keep the law of Moses, they don't keep the Torah anymore, it's not entirely true because... If you want to understand what the covenant, the everlasting covenant, the Torah really is, Exodus 19.8, and the people answered together and said, all that the Lord has spoken, we will do. As Christians, as Latter-day Saints, as Mormons, this is our covenant with the Lord. We grow in grace, and that means deepening our personal relationship with God. And as we are moved by the Holy Spirit to do things, we, we do them. And if we're doing them, then we are following the covenant, and therefore we are a people of the Torah. And if you want to understand what that looks like, go back to what Jesus said. He was asked, what is the greatest commandment? Love God. And the second is like unto it, love thy neighbor. Upon these rest the Torah 
and the prophets, all the Torah and the prophets. So are we a people of the Torah? I personally have to say yes. Being a Mormon means following the Torah. Because all that the Lord speaks unto us, as we are moved by his grace, we will do. There are many, many things in the Torah that, as Christians, generally speaking, we don't do. But there is also many, many things that we do. And to be perfectly blunt, as Christians, we cherry pick. We do what we feel we should do based on what we're moved to do by the grace of Jesus Christ. And that's why we're not saved by works. We just do the works as we're moved by the faith. The Torah teaches us that we must be washed clean. What we as Christians today call baptism. And so therefore, any branch of Christianity that baptizes still keeps the Torah. And so therefore, we are keeping the Torah. We are keeping the law. Even if it's just to that degree. And, and I will at some point make a video talking more about the, the Torah and how it reflects with us as Christians. But for now, I do want to point out that in my mind, what he's saying here is that because we have the faith and we are growing in the grace of Jesus Christ, we do the works. That is how I would interpret this. So as a Mormon, we are going to bear good fruits. We are a people that searches the scriptures. We don't merely read them, we search them. It says, wherefore we search the prophets. And we have many revelations and the spirit of prophecy. So we don't merely read them and say, oh, it says this. We take it to our friend, the Lord, our friend, the Holy Spirit, our friend, Jesus. And we are a prophetic people. What is a Mormon? Mormons are prophetic people. Because we have a testimony of the Book of Mormon, how do we get that? Through the spirit of prophecy and revelation. Therefore, we have the gift of of the spirit of prophecy and revelation. We take things to the Lord and we ask and we expect an answer. And by that faith, we receive answers. We don't just look to a prophet to lead and guide us in these latter days. No, as Mormons, as Latter-day Saint Christians, we are a prophetic people and we cut out the middleman, and we go straight to the Lord ourselves. That's what Joseph Smith taught. That's what the Book of Mormon is teaching here with Jacob. Then he says that having all these witnesses, we obtain a hope. Mormons have hope. We don't focus on fear and doubt and everything's going to hell. We find the hope of Jesus Christ. We are a hopeful people, a people of peace, a people of love. So we obtain a hope, and with that hope, our faith becomes unshaken. And what happens when our faith is unshaken? We become a people of miracles. These signs, these miraculous signs follow after us. As a prophetic people, we are a people of miracles. Now, I want to look at this in a couple different ways. It says here, the very trees obey us. If you look all over the world, there's a thing called GMOs. That's where we modify plants. And it's very controversial today. But the reality is that GMOs have been around forever. Imagine you're a Nephite and you need to figure out how to turn this thing that looks like grass into the corn that we know today. How do you do that? You take it to the Lord and the very trees, the plants, obey. It can also be more. In South America, I've read that there are actual trees that, that move. I think it's actually pretty interesting. Whether that's what this is talking about or not, I don't know. When he talks about moving mountains, that can be figurative. Things, that, a task that just seemed absolutely impossible, we have faith, we go and do it, and it happens. But it also could be, literally, a mountain moving. The waves of the seas, ending storms. I've seen this happen in real life, but it can also be the storms of emotions. We are supposed to Mourn with those who mourn. Be joyful with those who are joyful. Those who rejoice with those who are rejoicing. How do we do that? We love them. So we can look at this and see 
grandiose superpowers like in some Marvel movie, but we can also see this as common occurrences in everyday lives where we shape and reshape human emotions to turn the tides of anger, sorrow, depression into joy, hope, and love in Jesus Christ. Nevertheless, the Lord God shows us our weaknesses that we may know that it is by His grace and His great condescensions unto the children of men that we have power to do these things. What is that saying? That we don't take the credit to ourselves. We give the glory to God. That is what it means to be a Mormon. People may look at us and say, wow, look at these things that you did. This is amazing. It wasn't us. We were only able to do it because God gave us the power to do so. Therefore, give the glory to God. That is the key. Everything is based around Jesus Christ because Mormons are Christians. If we're giving the glory to Jesus, we know it's not because of us. It's because of him. And it can only happen because of our great love and faith in him. And then finally, behold, great and marvelous are the works of the Lord. How unsearchable are the depths of the mysteries of him. And how impossible that mankind should find out all of his ways. No man knoweth of his ways, save it be revealed unto him or her. Wherefore, brethren and sistren, despise not the revelations of God. This is the capstone, the piece that goes on top. Rejoicing in Jesus Christ. Everything that I have said up to this point is all about Jesus Christ. Mormons focus on Jesus Christ. That's what we do. We give the glory to him and we are constantly searching and striving to get to know him better, to deepen that personal relationship with him. The ultimate goal in Mormonism, I believe, is to see Jesus Christ, to handle the, his flesh, to see his wounds. I don't believe that that's an impossible task. In fact, I know that it is possible and I testify to you that it is possible. We are a people of revelations. We seek the revelations of others to read and study, and there are a plethora of them, and we seek revelations from God personally because we are a prophetic people. So, brothers and sisters, this is what it means to be a Mormon to me. When someone says, what's a Mormon? These passages are my definition. But like I said, if you talk to a hundred of us, you're going to need a different answer. So what I would like for you to do, please, is to go down to the comment section and tell me what does it mean to be a Mormon to you? When someone asks you, you're a Mormon, what does that mean? Share with us what it means to you. Do you agree with the things that I'm saying? Do you have something to add to it? Or a different perspective? People would like to know. I would like to know. And finally, in conclusion, I do want to say that if you've enjoyed this video, if you've gotten anything out of it, please like and share. If you'd like to hear more messages of hope in a world of divisiveness, love, and a world that pushes fear, then please subscribe to this channel. If you'd like to learn more about the fellowship, visit us at cjccf.org. And you can email us info at cjccf.org. Thank you for spending time with us today. Shalom. And God bless.